Now, are floating power ships a safe solution to South Africa's electricity woes? That is the question that is yet to be answered. In 2021, Turkish company Car Power Ships won the lion's share of an emergency tender to try and ease the shortage of power supply in South Africa. The deal was meant to see three floating power stations, which use liquefied natural gas to produce electricity, docking at Saldana Bay, Richards Bay and Kucha, providing a 1,000 and 220 megawatts of additional power to the grid. But the environmental licensing process failed. The Department of Environmental Affairs dismissed car power ships application after activists lodged complaints about the impact on fishing ecosystems and gas emissions. Earlier this year, Environmental Minister Barbara Creasy dismissed an appeal, but she did give the company a chance to correct various gaps and procedural, def uh, procedural defects. So essentially giving car power ships another chance. Now car power ships has uh, launched a, a bid to deal with these gaps that will involve additional power, uh, public consultation with residents around the affected docks. To discuss we're joined by the director of car power ships South Africa Mehmet Katmer. Mr. Katmer thank you for being with us. There are a lot of South Africans um, opposed to your planned project if we're honest. Do you think you will be able to convince them this time that all will be well. Uh, thank you very much and good afternoon. Thanks for having me here on SABC. Uh, I mean, from, from our perspective, we have been uh, working on, on our projects for the last uh, couple of years. And now uh, on this environmental approval process, actually it is a very fairly standard process on these energy infrastructure projects. And we have been doing this all around the world. Currently, uh, Karpausch has operations in 13 different countries, Asia, Africa, and Americas. Uh, and as a part of this process, uh, I think public participation is one of the very key elements. Uh, and we are very much looking forward to uh, engage, re-engage with the communities in three different sites, Saldana Bay, Kuha, and Riches Bay next week. Uh, and hopefully uh, we will be able to answer the questions. I'm sure there will be people against the project, as you said, and there will be people uh, which support the project. Hopefully they will get the answers for their questions. Mm. But we are very much looking forward to engage with them. So anybody can come and they can ask any questions. Exactly. I mean, this is an open forum and the, the, they should be registered as an uh, interest and affected party, obviously. Uh, but the process doesn't stop uh, uh, next week for the questions. I mean, there will be a physical meeting as well as a virtual meeting next week. But in addition to that, there is a period where uh, interested and affected parties can pose questions. Uh, and we will answer them uh, in the next couple of weeks as per the regulated timeline. Mm -hmm. And then we will uh, deliver our final environmental report, uh, hopefully the first week of January. Let's look at some of the, the details of the concerns. I mean, concerns about fishing communities affected. Environmental groups at one stage were saying that this contract, which is for 20 years, these ships will be uh, offshore for 20 years, and they could generate close to 20 million tons of carbon dioxide emissions per site. Uh, what can you tell people with those concerns? Can you honestly say uh, that the environmental damage will be limited? Certainly. Now, first of all, uh, floating energy infrastructures, floating powers, power ships, and FSRUs uh, are not new. I mean, they have been used all around the world, especially in the developed world as well. And when we approach this from uh, what should be a power mix in a country, uh, obviously, now IPP office, DMRE, ESCOM are running tenders for renewable. They will be having capacity. Currently, we, have, we know that uh, the aging fleet uh, needs to be replaced. And this will be coming from various technologies. One would be renewable. And I think our yeah. technology, gas to power, LNG to power, is the most complementary technology to renewable. So we believe this is the right technology for use. And when it comes but to environmental effects we understand the concerns these concerns are not new to us we are going through similar processes all around the world 
and we address all of the concerns in our environmental report and we will answer the questions uh, but, but what but I can, can, can can you answer me now will these uh, contracts generate 20 million tons of carbon emission carbon dioxide emissions per site is is that correct uh, I couldn't uh, say the exact emissions on top of my head, but these power plants... But, but how can you not are, when that is one of the, the main concerns that South Africans have? Carbon emissions. I think carbon... Let's look from this perspective. Currently, there is an aging fleet of ESCOM, right? Currently, uh, the majority of the uh, generation is coming from the coal power plants. The gas to power and energy to power is definitely the most cleanest base load dispatchable technology that you could ever find. So whatever would replace those coal power plants would be much cleaner for South Africa. And South Africa definitely needs this dispatchable power. And okay. once our project... Sh uh, surely to in justify that, you, you need to tell us exactly what the emissions will be. Will you be able to do that at the meetings next week? Definitely, definitely. I think all the information has already been provided to the public and we will have all our specialists lined up uh, for the public to engage mm -hmm. and they will answer all the detailed questions for sure. Uh, you, you're offering dirty energy. Um, you, you say it's better than coal. Of, of course it is. But we're in an environment where there are uh, new renewable innovations taking place all the time and South Africa will be locked into this deal for 20 years when upcoming technology then has to be ignored. There's a very long string attached to this deal. Is that justified? I think it's definitely justified. Let's go back a little bit. This is a tender which was open uh, to all the international power companies and it was a technology agnostic uh, tender, which means any kind of dispatchable power could have been. And we are only three, we have only three projects out of the 11 that are awarded. And some of them are renewable with batteries, and some of them uh, are LNG to power. Uh, and in our project, I think 20 years is the term that has been selected by, by the government, by the MRE, and we have uh, basically responded to that. And we believe that gave the best value for money for South Africa. But when it comes to, I understand the concerns of emissions, which is a, a very right concern, but today, in order to alleviate the load shedding, South Africa needs immediate power. And I can comfortably say, I think on this scale of a gigawatt size, there is no faster technology compared to power ship. So we are the fastest that could be brought into the South African grid. And when we look to the emissions, I think once the renewable uh, would kick in, this is the most flexible generation capacity so we could once the re renewable generation capacity in south africa is there we could be used less and less it doesn't need to be based out all the time but today south africa i think needs this yeah. power needs all the project not only ours yeah definitely. I, I, I wish we had more time but let's deal with uh, some other quick major concerns that south africa has rough seas uh, so so you need this uh, stability just just tell us if that is a problem and it's fine if it's fast it's it's fine if it's reliable but what about the fishing communities what about the impact uh, on the the sea life Definitely. First of all, we have made all our analysis, including uh, the sea life, uh, the marine life, impact on marine life. I mean, our power ships are engineered with all the necessary equipment in order to limit the, 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 the impact uh, to all, all its concerns. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, you will find in our uh, submission that all applicable regulations are met in terms of the temperature change on the water. So I don't see, we don't see any issue and we are happy to uh, answer more questions in the public participation. So uh, from, from our perspective, the, the fishing communities, we are working with them in all these different geographies. And we are engaging with them in, in these three different communities as well. And once these projects will be there, there will be more job creation for them. And we will be supporting the communities there. And there will be no impact for the marine life from these projects. All right. How much will you earn? Because the deal was valued at 218 billion rand at the time. Uh, gas has gone up, gas prices. How much will it cost now? 
I think, first of all, if we look from an overall perspective, all the commodities prices have increased, including the cost of renewable. I think the price that we have agreed two years ago is quite, I think, attractive more than ever for South Africa. Uh, the, the calculations, I don't think uh, I can comment on them if it is 200 billion or what. But what I could say is, if you look to the long term, gas prices today are very high, but two years ago they were very low. It's a cyclical uh, cycle. Uh, if, we, if you look long term enough, I think gas uh, is, is a good complementary dispatchable fossil fuel that you could use in this generation technology. All right, you said you want to refile by January. When do you think there will be a yay or nay for car power ships uh, so that you will know and the South African public will know? And if it's a yes, how quickly does the power get onto the grid? Uh, we, if we follow the uh, timeline, and if DFE follows the timeline as well, we are expecting an answer uh, from DFE by end of March, hopefully. Uh, which we, which will take us to the financial close by April. Uh, financial close means us uh, starting the, the project work. Uh, so it will take around 12 months for us to deliver the power ships and plug them to the grid. So hopefully by mid 2024, we will be able to start operations if everything goes as planned. And, and final, final question. I mean, if if dead fish start rising to the surface amid the deal, will South Africa have recourse uh, if anything goes wrong and your environmental estimates turn out to be wrong? First of all, I mean, I've been working in this industry for a while and I've been all in all these sites and there is no such thing as that fishes where we operate, definitely. On the contrary, there are more fishes after we are there. And in the contract, I think, uh, South African government and ESCOM has all the necessary uh, measures uh, if anything goes wrong. But we don't expect anything to go goes wrong and on that point at all. All right. Thank you for your time tonight. That was Car Powership South Africa Director Mehmet Kutmer.